Hello there, welcome to today's edition of Editorials, a broadcast from Canada. My name is Sandra Asante. So today, we are drawing content on a still on Ethiopian civil war, but thousands of protesters march on UK, US embassies in Atisa, Baba. That's what we're looking at today, so don't go anywhere, we'll be back after the break. You're welcome back from the break. So the criticism of Western countries' perceived involvement in Ethiopia's civil war rose uh, to new levels on Thursday when thousands of protesters marched on the American and British embassies in the Ethiopian capital, Latis Ababa. Protesters call on U.S. President Joe Biden to revise his foreign policy and accused foreign governments of planning to dismantle the sovereignty of Ethiopia. The demonstrations uh, came a day after the Ethiopian government announced that Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed traveled to the front lines of the battle against forces from the Tigray region. The Tigray forces, who had long dominated the national government before Abiy came to power, appears to have momentum in all this going on but ethiopia and its allies are uh, involving in the war that has killed tens of thousands of people over the past year they have approached the capital at Ababa in recent weeks with the aim of strengthening their negotiating position or simply forcing the prime minister to step down Abi previously said a martyrdom might be necessary and had invited Ethiopians to join him. The prospect of the Asian nation breaking apart has alarmed both Ethiopians and observers who fear what will happen to the often turbulent horn of Africa at large. Countries including the USA, France, Germany and Turkey have told their citizens to leave immediately. Now the big question here is what will a full-blown conflict mean for Ethiopia's future? Tigrayan forces and allies said they are advancing towards the capital, Latisa Baba. Ethiopia's year-long conflict in North is threatened to descend into a widening civil war. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed also announced this week that he will lead the battle against Tigrayan forces from the front lines, encouraging volunteers to join the fight. International and regional leaders are also calling for a ceasefire to allow a political solution. But when were thousands of people killed by the conflict? But even with thousands of people killed by the conflict, both sides are beating drums of war. What would an all-out conflict mean for the future of Africa's second most populous country? Thank you so much for joining today's edition of Editorials. My name is Sandra Asante. You should have a great day.